I think the, the vast majority of, uh, of lending today happens in ways that are secured on future income, secured on bank accounts, or secured on other assets. Um, pure unsecured lending, I don't think, is the vast majority, but this may change. What I also think we're going to see is a redefinition of what it means to do secured lending. Uh, one of the things I've been toying with as an idea is this concept of redefining both the time scale and uh, the um, granularity of what we considered secure lending. So, uh, for example, today we talk about secured lending on an asset like a house over a 30-year period, etc. Yesterday you had the lightning people here. Huge. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things to think about is that lightning payment channels in themselves are a form of extending microcredit over milliseconds. Secured microcredit based on a hash lock time contract redemption or confiscation or <laughs> system. But what it does is it, it allows, for example, someone who's streaming video to extend you microcredit for one second of video secured by assets held in a multisig on a granularity of Satoshi and milliseconds. So what we're doing is we're redefining the very scale of secured lending down to something that is completely unrecognizable in traditional sense. And if you extend that to other areas, I don't know what that does. I, I see them as um, credit collateralized by the multisig balance, um, because the multisig balance actually may be held by an intermediary which then acts effectively as a, as a bank extending payment channel credit based on True, that. True, that's another trust point. That's another trust point, yeah. So again, I, I'm not saying the trust points don't necessarily change. Some of them will. Um, but a lot of the other parameters of what is secured lending and unsecured lending change quite dramatically. I think smart contracts allow us to address default risk much more directly than the way we do today. So today, default risk is the thing we're trying to control for. Instead of controlling for default risk, we control for reputation, which is a derivative of default risk, if you think about it on a time scale, because it's based on future earnings. And we don't actually do reputation itself. We take the proxy to reputation, which is identity and past behavior, which is a second derivative, right? And try to do that to control risk default, uh, so default risk. And so when you're touching something that's, that's two steps away from what you're trying to affect, that introduces a lot of inefficiency and risk. I think smart contracts may actually allow us to address default risk much more directly than through the proxy of reputation based on identity, based on past behavior. Let me give you an example. Reputation systems have colossal failure modes. Bernie Madoff had the highest possible reputation the day before he had zero. <laughs> that is the failure mode of reputation systems, and in fact, that's exactly how they fail. Um, and so, again, I think we will see a lot of change in this space. So we're not talking about simply changing the means by which we pay or the currency in which we pay. We're talking about restructuring the relationship between lender and borrower, the power and positioning of intermediaries, the time scale and granularity of payment systems and credit systems that exist in between, and the means by which we control for default risk. That is a very disruptive and fundamental change of the entire structure of credit systems. So it's a lot more exciting than just Bitcoin. All right, let's take another question. Thank you. Thank you.